Hi there. Thanks for taking time to learn about the logic model or the theory of change. If you've never heard about it, great. This is a great place to stop by. If you've heard about it before, no worries. This is a great refresher as well. You can always learn more about the logic model as I have always, always learning something new uh, when I try to teach it to other people. So in a nutshell, what is a logic model? A logic model is a theory of change, visually linking the connections between your uh, problem, very important, solution, your mission statement, if you will, the activities, the outputs, the outcomes, and the intended impact desired by a given initiative program that you may be thinking about starting or you've already started already for a while. Now, it's usually the case that um, most programs that are operating, especially in, um, in the informal STEM world, civic science, science policy, um, not to have a logic model in hand or to have some other uh, dimension, um, uh, similar, something similar to it. But it's always a good exercise to start building one. If you're ever thinking about evaluation, first thing an evaluator would ask is, where is your logic model? So this word, it may, if it's sounding foreign to you, um, there's a, you can use the QR code below or the link below to click on this and you can get access to the, to the Kellogg's Foundation Logic Model Development Guide. This is a fantastic read, which I really recommend, highly recommend that you uh, take a read. It has a lot of ton of information in there going through what a logic model is, some examples and really goes through the nuts and bolts about this um, this this uh, this engine, if you will, this tool that is available. And here's how they describe it, similar to what I used earlier. The focus for them, as they say in the in the development guide, is that it's on the problem or issue and the reasons for proposing the solution suggested. Um, but but the core of the core thesis is really about making those connections between the different elements of your program and why you're doing them and, and how you're doing them. And so um, this diagram that you see here is essentially a guide to how you can create one. I would recommend it be a one pager if you can. It really forces you to be focused, to be succinct in terms of what you are putting on the logic model. The most important thing on there is the problem itself. Uh, a well-articulated problem really helps in designing an effective solution, whatever that may be in terms of what your program, your initiative, whether it's science policy, whether it's more on the uh, informal STEM engagement, public engagement, a highly, the, the better articulated the problem, the easier it is to design an, a solution that can be evaluated more effectively. So if you, as you look at this uh, diagram here, uh, the, the components I mentioned earlier are listed. The problem, the mission, the inputs, the activities, the outputs, and the outcomes. And again, read the development guide to go through all these elements in greater detail. But I, if I was to pick on one of these, it would be the outcomes. So the outcomes are really where people would go wrong. They confuse them with the outputs. The outcomes are the intended benefits, the change that you want to see in the target population that you are um, working with. And so that usually is also a problem. Who is your target audience? You want to be focused. You want to figure out what's the problem that you're addressing. So these are important questions. The logic model forces you to answer these questions ahead of time. The earlier you do this, the better. So the outcomes, the intended change that you want to seek. Are they, does the audience learn better? Are they, um, what, what changes happen to them? before and after your uh, engagement, right? Your intervention, if you will, your program. The outputs are more operational. So in your program, what, how many events have you done in the past 10 weeks? How many people have come to your events? How many social media followers are uh, following your initiative and so forth, right? They're more operational, right? How, how many team members do you have? How many grants did you apply to? And what, what was your su success rate, right? So they're more operational in nature. So that's the really good distinction. And, and you could have um, short-term and medium-term and long-term outcomes, right? Whether it's career-related, depending on your audience, to if you're thinking more on a policy, that those tend to be on the longer-term side of things, right? Um, the, the actual creation of a policy or the adaptation. Again, you want to think through what is that change that you want to seek to create and for whom, right? And where and so forth. Uniting all of these are your assumptions. And if you read the development guide, 
They really take a, they do a great job thinking about your assumptions because it's important to think about them. How are they related? Who is involved? Because you don't want to stop building something assuming X is true and it turns out to be false. Suddenly the whole thing collapses. So it's a really great tool, again, as a logic model to use. There's some fantastic example. Here's one from the AAA, AAAS. Um, take a look at this. The link uh, is below in the QR code, and you can you can see their uh, outline. They do come in different flavors as well. You can make some adaptations to your logic model. Really suits your needs. Uh, another one is from an organization um, uh, called Micro, which are these mobile-based museums based in New York City, and they actually put their logic model on their website, you know, for everybody to see. I think that is exactly what we need to see more of. And so, it, again, it puts you, it makes you accountable, right? People can ask you questions against your logic model, and that's what you want. It helps a lot with thinking about evaluation. And I think this is where I would encourage you to think deeply about this, involve your stakeholders. The logic model really allows you to bring people together to look at it. Um, it's a dynamic document. It's not something you do once and you say goodbye. It is something that you continually are updating. You are improving. You are asking questions against. You are updating. I'll repeat that again. You are updating. And so it's not something you do once and put it away. It's an active document that you keep changing. But it's a great tool to bring people together, different stakeholders, to get you thinking and um, more deeply about what you're trying to do. The benefits are really, um, as I mentioned, it's a tool to engage with folks. And the development guide goes through a list of things here about some of the benefits. This one I love, again, for evaluation is a no-brainer. Bringing people together. Um, building a shared understanding of what the program is all about and how the parts work together. Don't, don't take that for granted. Finding gaps in the theory or logic of the program and work to resolve them. So again, it's a great tool to start with. It is not the full detail nuts and bolts of how and when you're going to be doing things, kind of like a timeline. That is the next stage of development where you're going to create what is called a pro project charter. And that is something different that we don't have time to talk about right now. But the logic model is really where if you're going to start something, you want to have this on hand, available to you, something you can pass on to the next generation, next sort of folk that are going to be running your program in the long term. Um, and so this was a quick, quick review of the logic model. Hopefully it has inspired you to go and learn more about the logic model and what it entails. Do take a read at the development guide. It's a fantastic um, tool to have on hand and start looking at some examples of logic models that are out there that really do come in different shapes and sizes too. And if all of that, you still, if you're curious and you want to get in touch, do get in touch with me. I'm happy to talk with you further and uh, take a look at some example logic models and uh, give you some feedback. All right. Thank you so much. <music>